A person five feet tall walks directly toward a street light that is 12 feet above the ground. If the person is walking at a constant rate and the person's shadow is shortening at the rate of five feet per second, at what rate in feet per second is the person walking? Woo! So here we go. Here comes the problem. Again, there's no equation here. You have to make it. All right, so we have a person, a shadow. I have a street light, okay? So I have a street light. Are you okay? The street light is 12 feet tall. Are you okay a person walking? Is, how tall is this person? This person is five feet tall. And if you think about light, isn't light going to come off and make a shadow over here? So won't that light come directly over, causing a shadow? And so your shadow would be right there. Isn't that your shadow? I know it's in green, but that would be your shadow. Think about that logic of a shadow and a light. Assume it's nighttime. <laughs> assume it's nighttime. If it's daytime, uh, the light's not going to help too much with shadows. But we're assuming it's nighttime. Forgot to say that. Okay, so I have a picture now. Hopefully my light is 90 degrees from the ground. We're hoping that. Okay, now we got to look at some things here. Okay, let's see. Well, we know there is a 3 in this equation. All right, there's a 3. Okay, so it says right here that the shadow, um, if the person is walking at a constant rate and the person's shadow is shortening at a rate of 3 feet per second. All right, so are you okay that this green is, we'll call this green x. So wouldn't dx dt be equal to negative 3 feet per second. Just think about that. Because it's shortening. So wouldn't it be negative 3 feet per second? So as you walk, wouldn't your shadow be shortening by negative 3 feet per second? All right. Now, how does that help me? <laughs> you have to still make an equation. All right, and to do this, I'm going to make up some stuff to kind of help because this is a unique one. This comes up. This problem does cut up. I've seen it on multiple AP tests. I'm going to call this section Y because that's how you're changing in a correlation. Isn't Y going to be the distance from you to the pole, which is important to this problem? Y is the distance between you and the pole. Now, here's just going to blow your mind a little bit. Watch this. Are you okay? There's two right triangles here. There's one right triangle that's 12 by x plus y, and there's a smaller one inside that is 5 by x. Are you okay? If I put, these are called similar right triangles. Can you see this is the small triangle, and this is the big triangle, called similar right triangles. These two are similar. When they're similar, you can make a proportion. Do you remember something where you can do a 12 to 5 equals x plus y to x. You could have also done 12 to x plus 5 is 5 to x. It doesn't matter the proportion. You just got to go this to this equals this to this or this to this equals this to this. One way, you have to kind of follow the same pattern. And I now have an equation of this relationship. I now have an equation for this relationship. Now, I could solve the equation and then take its derivative, or I could take the derivative as is. I think it'd be easier to solve this right now and then take its derivative than to solve it as where it is right now. Got it. Sorry, I'd rather, before taking the derivative, I'd rather, I'd rather solve it for like y or x. So let's change this up a little bit before we start taking derivatives. So if I cross multiply here, won't we get 12x is equal to 5x plus 5y? Could I minus the 5x over? And now I have 7x is equal to 5y. Now I can choose to solve it for x or y. Um, and in this problem, aren't we trying to find dy dx? We are actually trying to find dy dx, if you haven't known that. We are trying to find dy dx. How do I know that? Because what we're looking for is how far, how quickly the person's walking. And how quick the person's walking is the y value, how much of the y value is changing. 
So that's actually what we're looking for. So to solve for y, because I'm going to put dy dx in a second, I'm going to divide by 5. So I have y equals 7 fifths x. That is my relationship going on. Uh, and then I want to take a derivative of this. I want to take a derivative in respect to time. So this is my equation. I want to take the derivative of this in respect to time. So what would that be? That would be dy dt is equal to, ooh, that was an ugly 7, 7 fifths dx dt. Oops, sorry. Yeah, dx dt. All right? Because 7 fifths is just a constant. The derivative of this is 7 fifths, and you take the derivative of of x inside, which is dx dt. So that is my derivative. So could I now plug in dx dt and find dy dt? Do I even need a, a value? No. I don't even care about a value, how far away I am from the fence, because from here, could I simply find it? Yeah, watch. If I simply do y dt is what we're looking for, 7 fifths times negative 3, because isn't dx dt right here? The shadow's changing by that much. So if I simplify this, won't that give me dy dt is equal to negative 21 fifths, and that would be feet per second. And that is what we're trying to find, the rate of change of dy dx. The rate of change Right here, we're trying to find it. Let's see. Is the person walking? So a person is walking at a constant rate, um, shortening. At what rate in feet per second is the person walking? So the person is walking towards. Isn't it a negative? Isn't, the, isn't my y values here getting shorter? If I'm walking towards the lamp, are my y values getting shorter? That's why it's a negative. Because I'm walking towards the lamp, cre decreasing my y values here. And my shadow would actually get shorter, too. So altogether, this is the rate at which you're walking towards the lamp. These questions are tough because you have to be able to think and make a geometric shape up. Then you have from your geometric shape, you have to take derivatives, and then you have to plug numbers in. Good luck with them.